We will put all of the ways that we have learned to say hello together, starting with Spanish. Are you ready? Hola. Konnichiwa. Habari. And now for our book read of the day, African American Heroes, Wynton Marsalis. But first, let's take the time to read some words you should know. Chapter 1. Growing up with music, Wynton Marsalis was born in New Orleans on October 18, 1961. Wynton's father Ellis and his mother Dolores loved music. Their favorite kind of music was jazz. Ellis was a piano player who played in New Orleans jazz clubs. Ellis and Dolores hoped that their children would also become musicians. They named Wynton after a jazz piano player. Wynton Kelly. While Wynton was growing up, the house was always filled with the sounds of music. Wynton could hear people playing all over the house. Ellis would play the piano. Wynton's older brother, Branford, would be in a different room practicing the saxophone. Wynton's younger brother, Delfeo, was learning to play the trombone. And his youngest brother, Jason, played the drums. When Wynton was six, the well-known trumpet player, Al Hurt, gave him a trumpet. Wynton had his first trumpet lesson, but he was not really interested in learning how to play the trumpet. He did not want to spend hours a day practicing. Wynton would much rather play ball in the street with his friends. Chapter 2. Wynton Learns How to Play the Trumpet When Wynton was 10, he had his second trumpet lesson. But playing the trumpet was not easy for Wynton. He made funny sounds on the horn. Wynton knew that he would have to work hard if he wanted to get better. But Wynton still liked hanging out with his friends instead of practicing. When Wynton was 12, he had his third trumpet lesson. Now, Wynton got serious about the trumpet. Ellis taught Wynton all about jazz music. He played records of the great jazz musicians for his son. Wynton practiced three to five hours a day, playing his trumpet at every spare moment. Wynton began to learn how to play classical music. Wynton liked to listen to records by great jazz musicians like these, Duke Ellington, Dizzy Gillespie, Miles Davis, Charlie Parker. In high school, Wynton joined the band. He and his brother Branford played at dances with a couple of local groups. Wynton worked very hard on his trumpet and he kept getting better. He also worked hard in school. Wynton graduated from high school with very high grades. Wynton enjoyed playing in the school band like these students. Chapter 3. Wynton Goes to New York In 1979, at the age of 18, Wynton decided that he wanted to be a musician more than anything else. So he packed up his trumpet and went up north to New York City. There, Wynton tried out for the Juilliard School of Music. Juilliard is one of the most famous music schools in the world. Only the best music students can go there. When the teachers heard Winston play, they chose him for the school. While at Juilliard, Winton practiced the trumpet for many hours each day. He met musicians from all over the world. He learned about all different kinds of music. 
Winton got a job in the evenings playing trumpet in a Broadway show. Then in 1980, the jazz drummer Art Blakey asked Winton to join his group, the Jazz Messengers. Winton traveled all over the country playing with the Jazz Messengers. Art Blakey thought Winton was one of the best jazz trumpet players he ever heard. He told Winton to start his own band. So Winton started a group with his brother, Branford. In 1982, Winton made his first jazz record with the new band. It won a Grammy Award, an important music prize. In 1984, Winton became the first person to ever win a Grammy for a jazz record and a Grammy for a classical record. The following year, he won the same two awards again. Chapter 4, Winton teaches children about jazz. Every year, Winton traveled to different cities to play jazz. He played at clubs and at concerts. Jazz was Winton's favorite music because he could make up notes of his own as he played. Wherever he went, Winton visited schools to teach children about jazz. In 1991, Winton became the director of the Jazz at Lincoln Center program in New York. There he organized jazz concerts, but Winton enjoyed teaching just as much as performing. So in 1992, he started a series of educational programs for kids called Jazz for Young People. He did jazz programs on the radio and on TV. He wrote books about jazz too. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina hit the East Coast of the United States. It destroyed many buildings in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Texas. The damage in New Orleans was terrible. This made Winton very sad because New Orleans was his hometown. So he played concerts to raise money and help the people of New Orleans rebuild their city. Over the years, Winton has brought joy to millions of music lovers. He has won many important prizes for composing and performing music. Winton has also been a great inspiration for young music students. He tells them there is only one way to improve their playing. Practice, practice, practice. And now here's a little timeline about what we just read in the book if you like to have a visual of Wynton Marsalis life so far. Broadway Babies. The musicians on hand often included such well-known stars as J. Rosman Johnson and Florence Mills. Mills, along with Josephine Baker, was the star of Shuffle Along, the first all-black musical to open on Broadway. It featured music and lyrics by Noble Sissel and U.B. Blake. The show premiered in 1921 ran for 504 performances and earned more than nine million dollars one of its tunes i'm just wild about harry would become harry s truman's 
campaign song during his successful run for president in 1948. Rhythm and Harmonies. Shows like Shuffle Along helped spread the popularity of jazz. Developed in the African American communities of New Orleans, this type of music had traveled to Harlem by way of Memphis, St. Louis, Chicago, and other stops along the path of the Great Migration. Blues music had taken a similar journey. Two years after the premiere of Shuffle Along, a young blues singer named Bessie Smith made her first recording for Columbia Records. She became the highest paid black performer of her time, traveling from venue to venue in her own railroad car, sharing the stage with Fletcher Henderson, Coleman Hawkins, and other jazz greats. Smith thrilled audiences with songs like Downhearted Blues, Aggravating Papa, and other hits. She was widely hailed as the Empress of the Blues. Get to know Josephine Baker. Josephine Baker, a dancer in Shuffle Along, became a breakout star. She moved to Paris to star in La Revue Negro, and her sensational performances made her the highest paid entertainer in France. Baker later served her adopted country as a member of the resistance during World War II and returned to the United States to protest racism in the 1950s and 60s. When she died in 1975, she became the first American woman to be buried in France with military honors. More than 20,000 Parisians lined the streets to salute her funeral procession. I did take the blows, but I took them with my chin up in dignity because I so profoundly love and respect humanity. Josephine Baker. Dapper Duke, Edward Kennedy Ellington, better known as Duke, led the hottest band in Harlem. A pianist and composer, he performed with his group at the Cotton Club. The popular night spot hired black people to entertain, but didn't welcome them as guests. The club's weekly radio broadcast brought the band new fans from all over the country. Duke Ellington and his orchestra had their first hit in 1927 a song called Creole Love Call. It was the beginning of a long, successful recording career. Many of the songs he performed, including Take the A Train and Mood Indigo are American classics. In 1956, he would become one of the few jazz musicians ever featured on the cover of Time Magazine. Ellington was the first jazz musician to receive the Presidential Medal of Freedom presented to him by Richard Nixon in 1969. When he died in 1974, many recognized him as one of the finest American composers of all time. Crashing to a Halt In addition, to bringing on the Great Depression, the Wall Street stock market crash of 1929 also brought the Harlem Renaissance to an end. For African Americans in Harlem and elsewhere, making art seemed far less urgent than making a living. That year, a musical review called Hot Chocolates opened on Broadway. It featured Ain't Misbehaving, a new song by Fats Waller, that would become a classic. The show's orchestra director was Louis Armstrong, one of the greatest jazz musicians of all time. Get to know Arthur A. Schomburg. When he was still in high school, Arthur Schomburg heard a teacher say that black people had no history. He dedicated his life to proving that teacher wrong. 
while working as a mail clerk at a bank, he began to put together one of the nation's largest collections of African American documents, art, and other artifacts. His reputation grew along with his collection, and by 1922, his work was well known. He further spread the word by giving lectures whenever he was invited. In 1926, as the Harlem Renaissance grew, the New York Public Library got a grant to pay $10,000 for Schomburg's 5,000 books, 3,000 manuscripts, and 2,000 etchings and drawings. In 1932, he was appointed curator of his own collection, which is now housed at the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture in Harlem. The American Negro must rebuild his past in order to make his future. Author A. Schomburg. And now we will practice saying goodbye in all the ways we have learned to say goodbye so far, starting with Spanish. Adios. Ang Yang. Kwa Sayonara.